Blender vs. Autodesk Maya Pixar-level animation costs thousands per license with Maya, yet Blender hands you similar power for free. Blender started as a scrappy community project, surviving on donations, but now you can model characters, build environments, even produce short films with it. Hollywood blockbusters lean on Maya's polished pipelines, but indie studios, YouTubers, and game devs quietly deliver jaw-dropping work with Blender. Its open plugins and constant community updates keep it fresh, while Maya feels locked behind contracts and price tags. What's wild is how students, with nothing more than a laptop, can compete in skill with pros who have million-dollar budgets. Blender turned 3D art from an exclusive industry into something you can just download and start experimenting with tonight. Audacity vs. Adobe Audition that scratchy podcast you listened to back in 2010? Chances are, it was edited in Audacity. The free software looks ancient, with menus straight out of Windows XP, yet it's the backbone for countless creators. Audacity trims, splices, and cleans audio without charging a cent. Adobe Audition, meanwhile, is slick and full of studio-grade effects, bundled into Creative Cloud. But here's the twist. A kid with a $20 mic and Audacity can produce something that sounds shockingly close to what radio stations pump out using Audition. Generations of YouTubers literally built careers on this open-source relic. Its raw, no-frills approach is exactly why it works. People open it, hit record, and content happens. Signal versus WhatsApp in some countries, the wrong message can land you in jail. That's why activists and journalists lean on Signal. It's a fortress of privacy. Messages vanish, metadata isn't stored, and the code is open for anyone to inspect. WhatsApp may have end-to-end -end encryption, but it's still tied to Meta, where data fuels a massive ad empire. Your family chats, school groups, and work banter all live there because it's easy. But when safety matters more than stickers or group memes, people switch to Signal. It runs entirely on donations, yet in critical moments, like protests or whistleblowing, Signal becomes the app that keeps conversations alive when trust in anything else feels dangerous. Trello vs. Jira Sticky notes on a wall, that's basically Trello in digital form. Drag a card from to do to done, and your project moves forward. Students, startup teams, even families planning vacations use it because it's instantly clear. Jira, though, is a corporate monster. Sprints, issue tracking, multi-layered workflows. Software companies run on it, but many employees groan at the complexity. Trello's charm was so strong that Atlassian, the same company behind Jira, bought it rather than compete. Open clones of Trello keep the simplicity simplicity alive today, giving anyone a lightweight alternative to Jira's heavy-duty cockpit. The real lesson? Sometimes the simplest board beats the enterprise dashboard full of buttons. Nextcloud vs. Google Drive Most people don't realize you can run your own Google Drive at home. Nextcloud lets you spin up a personal cloud server on a cheap PC or even a Raspberry Pi. Drag in files, share links, sync across devices. It works just like Google Drive. The difference? Your data stays with you. Google scans files to improve services and feed its ecosystem. Nextcloud never touches your stuff. Universities and nonprofits deploy it to protect sensitive records without relying on big tech. At home, some people use it as a private family hub for photos and documents, all hidden behind their own login. It's like replacing a skyscraper full of Google engineers with a community-built tool that respects control and privacy above everything else. KeyPass versus LastPass Password leaks are everywhere, and people are tired of trusting companies to guard them. LastPass is sleek and convenient, but it's been hacked before, ironically exposing the vaults it was supposed to protect. KeyPass flips the script. No cloud, no company, just an open-source vault file you control. Security pros love it because the code can be audited, and it runs offline by default. You carry the encrypted file on a USB stick if you want, like a digital safe in your pocket. LastPass relies on you handing over trust. KeyPass puts the keys, literally, in your hands. For paranoid users, that difference isn't just nice, it's survival. Shotcut versus Adobe Premiere Pro Editing software is often the gatekeeper for who gets to tell stories. Adobe Premiere Pro is the industry choice, powering Netflix productions and YouTubers alike, but it comes with a subscription fee that quietly drains wallets. Shotcut, by contrast, asks for nothing. It looks plain, but it cuts, merges, color corrects, and exports videos with zero strings attached. Students learning film, creators in low-income countries, or anyone who just wants to slice footage without piracy, Shotcut becomes the lifeline.
online. The irony is that most viral clips you see online don't need Hollywood-level tools at all. They just need quick edits, subtitles, and timing. Shotcut proves storytelling power isn't tied to a monthly bill. PostgreSQL vs. Oracle Database the backbone of banks, airlines, and governments often runs on Oracle's database system, and the licensing costs are massive. PostgreSQL, meanwhile, is free and has become powerful enough to rival it. Engineers call Postgres the developer's database because it's flexible, reliable, and endlessly extendable. Big names like Instagram and Spotify rely on it daily. Oracle locks clients in with contracts that last decades. Postgres thrives because a global community keeps improving it. For startups, the choice is obvious. Pay millions to Oracle or grow with a system that costs nothing but scales endlessly. It's one of the clearest examples where open source didn't just compete. It took entire industries by storm. Inkscape versus Adobe Illustrator. Vector graphics, the logos, icons, and diagrams we see everywhere, are usually crafted in Adobe Illustrator. It's the designer's powerhouse, but it's locked behind a subscription wall. Inkscape offers the same ability to draw infinitely scalable art, but with zero fees. Independent artists use it to design logos for local businesses, or craft SVG icons for websites without ever touching Adobe. Developers love that Inkscape speaks the same open standards the web itself is built on, while Illustrator is polished and tied to the Adobe suite, Inkscape thrives in grassroots spaces, small shops, educators, hobbyists, where budgets are tight, but creativity is endless. It's proof that beautiful design doesn't need to come with a corporate invoice. Jitsi Meet vs. Zoom Zoom became a verb during the pandemic, but it carries baggage, accounts, time limits, and corporate tracking. Jitsi Meet offers something radically simple. Open a browser, click a link, and you're in a video call. No account required. Schools in Europe, activists in restricted countries, and even families use it because it strips away friction. The open source nature means anyone can host their own Jitsi server, ensuring conversations never leave their control. It doesn't have the polished backgrounds and giant feature set of Zoom, but when privacy and speed matter most, Jitsi feels like a hidden superpower, especially in a world where Zoom fatigue and data collection are very real concerns. FreeCAD vs. AutoCAD Architecture, engineering, and product design have long been tied to AutoCAD, a tool so powerful that entire careers depend on it. But AutoCAD's licenses are notoriously expensive, locking out students and hobbyists. FreeCAD breaks down that wall. It lets anyone create 3D models of machines, parts, or even buildings without paying thousands of dollars. A high school robotics team can design gears with it. A maker in their garage can draft custom furniture. And professionals in developing countries rely on it when budgets don't allow corporate licenses. It's not as smooth as AutoCAD, but the freedom it gives turns the act of designing into something truly accessible. Nginx vs Apache HTTP Server Every time you load a website, some kind of server software is delivering those pages to your screen. For decades, Apache ruled the internet. It powered most of the early web. But then Nginx appeared, built to handle modern traffic with speed and efficiency. Open source from day one, Nginx was so good at managing heavy loads that companies like Netflix and Dropbox adopted it. The rivalry reshaped the backbone of the internet itself. Apache is still trusted and flexible, but Nginx became the workhorse for high-performance websites proving that a free community-built tool could literally steer the direction of the global web. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.